Hey guys, what's up? This is Stock Retail coming back to you again. Uh, I just had something on my mind today, wanted to share. <laughs> I think uh, if you've been around, you may know what this picture is of. So, um, you know, there's this like school of thought out there among some apes of good grief, how much corruption can sort of the bad guys get away with. And this feeling sometimes of, well, they can just do this forever um, and they can do anything they want. And um, in the middle of that, I just wanted to highlight, uh, you know, we've seen Costabaro climbing and obviously apes track that closely and why, um, you know, a lot of the manipulation of the stock market is fake. But boy, there's a one thing that's real in life and that's cash. And so I, I just want to ask how much cash are the shorts burning on AMC and go right into a real exercise. Uh, before I do, um, you know, you've seen i think in another video where i shared um actually i did a, a video on um fully paid lending and explaining what that is uh, if you haven't seen that just fully paid lending is basically our brokers um asking us to let them loan our shares out but they pay us a, a piece of the cut and so i had shared with you like i've seen schwab fidelity um, and e-trade all hovering around like 50 percent um, i just asked my broker again today you know, what's the update on that? Because I've seen the broader cost to borrow has climbed. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So I imagine perhaps they're ready to offer us more. And the reason I bring that up, um, you know, we're now at a point where the brokers themselves are willing to pay us a 50% rate on that. Think about like a yearly rate of 50% where you're guaranteed 50% return on your investment. Now, uh, check that fully paid lending um video out if you're thinking about it at all. I personally am not going to loan my shares. Uh, the brokers ha even have explicit language explaining that shorts are going to use that to drive the price down. Um, I'm not kidding. You can go check that. I sourced that in that other video. So no, I don't want to loan my shares out. But the fact that that rate is that high and that that's only our cut, that's not even the cut the broker would keep, tells me that cost to borrow out there is real, what you guys are seeing. And that's real money getting burned daily that that rate is paid daily i showed that in that other video too how my broker confirmed i would get paid cash daily by the shorts just to borrow my shares so let's just talk through how much cash are they burning every day um so let's just do the maths here uh kind of saying that tongue in cheek but first off uh, i just checked ortex this morning um from another ape posting you know go you can go find that yourself either if you've got ortex access or if you just want to see what apes are posting uh, and the shares on loan, so I'm focusing here not on short interest, but on the actual shares on loan, um, because that's what my broker's telling me. If I'll loan the shares, I'm going to get paid daily for the shares that get borrowed. So right now there's 176 million plus uh, shares out on loan. And so let's just do the math on this. All right, so um, as of the time I'm filming this, we're just under 550 uh, per share. You know, we're here in power hour. I don't know what we'll close at, but I'm just going to use 550 for simple math here. So let's say an AMC share is 550, then you multiply that out um, and you get uh, $970 million worth of shares on loan. Now that's gonna change daily, right? So the, depending on the value. And then you multiply that by, um, so first off, let's pause on that, that's a big deal. Almost a billion dollars worth of AMC shares right now. And of course that can fluctuate with the day-to-day -day price action, but almost a billion dollars worth are on loan. Okay, that, that's a lot in my mind. Uh, then multiply that by the rate. So I checked, um, I saw on Webull today, that's just kind of what I used to track on the phone. They're not my broker, but I just sort of track it, uh, charts and stuff on the phone there. On Webull, they're showing 109% cost to borrow. I'm going to give you a screenshot of that before we're through here, uh, but you could just go check that for yourself. And then um, the Ortex average that I saw out there, the average, guys, is 312%. To my knowledge, if I remember correctly, um, Ortex looks at, I think, 10 different um, loaning institutions to get that average. So across, if I'm right, 10 institutions, the average cost to borrow was 312%. Um, the reason Ortex does that and why I like that, I think you guys have seen in the past, sometimes there's there might be one max institution that's like triple everybody else, and then one minimum loan institution that does it at like 1% to throw the numbers off. So I kind of like that average, um, just, you know, like for instance, if you look at uh, the Stonko tracker, I think that's looking at the rate from interactive brokers. I should have looked at that before I did this video, but you can just go check that real quick. Um, but that's just one loaning institution there, IB. So 
Um, whether you want to use, you know, the Weeble rate, the IB rate, the Ortex rate, the point is it's crazy high. So let's just do some more math on that. So if about a billion dollars worth of shares are out on loan, and then you see these rates, uh, you just basically multiply the rate times the value. So in this case, you would get um, in a year, now that's if the rate held up for a year, right? Uh, $1.058 billion at that lower rate, the Weeble rate, or they'd be paying $3.028 billion at this Ortex average. Just pause on that for a second, guys. Just to hold these shares borrowed would cost them something from like $1 to $3 billion a year at the current rates. And again, I'm not at all saying this rate's going to hold up for the year. But now let's come back to daily. What does that mean? Because I did confirm for you based on my own DD, um, and I, I sourced that in the other video, showed you these guys are paying daily. There is cash burning daily. There's a reason I use this picture. Uh, I'm trolling a little bit. Some of our, you know, people that we believe are corrupt, but I'm also highlighting the fact they're literally having cash go out the door every day. The same people who troll us about AMC's cash flows have negative cash flows to hold their position. Okay, so divide by 365. Seems pretty easy, right? Like there's 365 days in the year. You want to get real technical, I guess. Maybe I could do 365 and a quarter. Sometimes the banks will um, actually do it more like 52 weeks, um, so more like the 360, whatever that is. Um, sorry, 364, whatever. But um, I'm just going to divide by 365, and then that comes up with almost $3 million a day at the Weeble rate or $8 million a day at the Ortex average. So I know for a fact these guys are burning anywhere from basically three to eight million dollars a day just to hold these borrowed shares. You guys understand the pressure that would put on you. You know, sometimes some of us say, okay, we'd really love the day when Adam's able to pay a dividend on the AMC shares uh, because if you hold a short position, you basically got to end up kind of covering that dividend, paying it out. Um, and so some of us believe that might put a lot of pressure on all the naked shorts because it would force just this massive payout um, on dividends. Well, this in some ways is like that. These guys are paying out three to eight million dollars a day to hold these borrowed shares. That's just not sustainable. That's per day money going out the door on their side. They're basically just burning it. So you think if you're a short and you kind of push the price down and push the price down and push the price down, and eventually it starts showing a lot of support. You know, look at our price action lately. Um, at some point, you've got to do, it doesn't matter how corrupt you are, you don't like giving away your cash. And at some point, you've got to do your own ROI kind of cost benefit analysis to say, geez, I'm giving up all my potential profits by just burning this cash daily, which is why, guys, the thesis has always been and still is those of us on the long side can hold longer than anybody on the short side because it doesn't cost me to be long in this stock. I can wait. These guys, on the other hand, have to pay money daily to stay in their position. I would much rather be long on AMC. And I want to talk too because we get trolled about cash flows and we saw, um, I won't even kind of uh, dignify the source with uh, you know naming them, but we saw an article today um, saying even if uh, movies got to pre-COVID levels uh, in 2023 that AMC wouldn't survive. And that's, first of all, that's insane on the surface of it. Like, no one could actually say that and sound sane. It, it's just not even, like, at least if you're going to troll, you know, try to use something scary. If you're going to say something that stupid, then it's just, like, obvious. But let me make it even more obvious why that's wrong. So this is from a, a long ago video. If you look at, like, um, why AMC's business is actually better post-COVID in terms of the, the underlying fundamentals. Um, and in that video, I even source all of this. This is from, most of this is from their financials. So you can actually go out and even fact check most of this. But so first off, ticket prices um, per person. Per person, we're paying a lot more post-COVID, and I mean a lot more post-COVID than we were uh, pre-COVID. And that is just kind of the laws of supply and demand um, theaters have sort of tested out sort of something called the price elasticity of these tickets and have found consumers are willing to pay more. So we're paying more uh, post-COVID. Uh, AMC is taking in more per person post-COVID than they were pre. Concessions, same thing. 
we're spending a lot more per person on food than we were pre-COVID. And I've checked the margins on that. Um, I've, I've sourced that in other videos as well. Uh, the margins have not eroded. So that's not like, you know, basically a, um, AMC's revenue on concessions has gone up actually even a little bit faster than their costs. So they're making more money uh, off of us on food and beverage than pre-COVID. The margins on the, the their cut of admissions have actually improved as well. Uh, again, I've also sourced that in, in other videos. In particular, just look at that, the video about kind of pre versus post COVID. Um, what I'm saying here is so when AMC, you know, gets our money from a ticket for a movie, then they give a cut of that back to the studios. Obviously, the studios, you know, Disney, Warner Brothers, Universal, Paramount, they want to make money on their movies. Makes sense. And I want them to make money on their movies because I want them to keep making more awesome movies. Um, if you look at AMC's financials, you see the percent of give back has actually decreased uh, from pre-COVID to post-COVID. I think studios understand they need the theaters to survive. So that's my hunch there, that studios have given um, given a little bit so that theaters can kind of have a, a, a healthier business. Um, AMC's property mix, so you kind of know the history. All you got to do is go kind of do a, just a little bit of a Google search and you'll find through COVID, AMC was cutting low performing properties and actually since has added some pretty high performing properties. I'm pretty excited for that Boston arc like arc light to open up here pretty soon. It's going to open up this spring. There's been some other like AMC opened up Topanga, AMC bought a couple other arc light theaters, um, a couple locations, you know, like the Grove in Los Angeles. So basically if you take away poorly performing properties, but you add better performing properties, your whole mix uh, and your profitability goes up. So that's better. Um, we know that popcorn's coming in stores, don't have to cover that. Um, just a side note on FUD, there was a, um, a negative account that had done a video saying you can't make money on grocery store popcorn. So I may do a video here soon, but I went actually to um, several manufacturers. So just think like Orville Redenbacher, Jiffy Pop, um, oh, I'm forgetting some of the names right now, but Blasto Butter, you know, all those. Um, I went and found their financials and proved for myself. I know the exact margin they're basically making on popcorn. Um, I always say on this channel, do not trust me, bro. Like there's no trust me bros here. So I'm stating to you something that I'm not backing up in this video, but, um, let's just say f at least for myself, I'm convinced, yes, there's a positive margin on popcorn and it's a pretty good one. So, um, and, and I'm specifically meaning grocery store popcorn, but anyway, that was not existing pre COVID. It is now merchandise. You guys saw how AMC sold out. Like I still don't have my hands on a tumbler guys. And I'm kind of annoyed with myself for not ordering it faster because they sold out, but it's not just actually the AMC merchandise. Like, do you remember when they made the Thor popcorn? I don't know the, with the mule near the hammer. Um, and that sold out, I think like twice they had to kind of, they made it and it sold out. Then they made it and it sold out and then they made more and sold that. So, um, doing fairly well on merchandising. Uh, and I cover that in the video too. Like they had hired even some managerial roles for merchandising, um, streaming. They didn't have that in the past. You know, I'll admit Adam came on the latest earnings call and kind of said that wasn't necessarily uh, a high margin. Uh, it's not driving high revenues, let's say actually. So apes, if you want to see AMC on demand continue, you need to start renting and buying from there, but that did not exist pre COVID. So even if they're not making much, but they're making something, um, that's better post COVID than pre COVID. I had covered in the other video, just the fact that we're invested in Highcroft, you know, um, I, I'm not suggesting that's anything big yet, but someday if they start pulling precious metals out of the earth, um, that's something AMC didn't have pre COVID in the business model. Uh, the NCMI shares, maybe you saw it's happened twice now that AMC has, um, in some ways, I don't quite want to say inherited. There's an expense line item every quarter that I think goes towards those. But AMC owns a ton of NCMI shares that actually pay dividends, by the way. So AMC is getting cash flow from those shares, not to mention if they ever go up, um, then AMC's uh, books will benefit from that. I proved in that other video as well that rents are actually down, guys. So rents are lower post-COVID than they were pre-COVID. That's reducing an expense, which is improving AMC's bottom line. And then you know about kind of the um, deal in Saudi Arabia where AMC is just getting a a check written to them for use of the AMC name in Saudi Arabia. They don't have the risk of owning the properties. They just literally get a paycheck um, from whoever's um, licensing out that, that name in Saudi Arabia. 
So, you know, sorry for flying through all that real quick. You know, like I said, I did this in much more detail in another video and sourced this stuff. Um, I'll probably do that again soon just so I can maybe do it in a simpler way. But the point is, you're hearing that AMC uh, will struggle even if movies get back. Whereas uh, I have proven to myself and hopefully to you, um, you can go look in the, the financials to fact check all of this. You know, if you have a higher profitability post COVID than pre COVID on your industry, then as the industry recovers, you're actually going to make more money post COVID than you did pre COVID. So saying that movies getting back to, you know, pre COVID levels would not help AMC survive is just insane on the surface of it. And actually, I've done the math that you don't even need to get to pre COVID, like total box office, um, to get to profitability for AMC. And Adam, by the way, has said as much publicly. So don't accept that, you know, just frankly, I wouldn't retweet it or give it any, you know, any oxygen. I'll just let the thing die personally. But um, just for you to know, AMC's business model is better post COVID than it was pre COVID. And in the meantime, Shorty is burning millions of dollars a day to hold the borrowed shares. And not not only that, but then spending all this money on all this FUD media. Uh, boy, I would much rather be long than short on AMC right now. Let's go.